my great honour <coughs> to introduce to you Gordon Cairns, who is a dear friend and a spiritual teacher of mine. Gordon has most recently been the chairman of David Jones and taken it through quite a controversial takeover. He has been the head of Pepsi and Arnott's. He's a man that shows what a spiritual practice and spiritual growth can do for the corporate market. Gordon came forward as the first person for my series very courageously. Gordon, I'd like to ask you, you're really the first to come out of what I would call the spiritual closet um, as one of our great business leaders and a Buddhist. How's that impacted on you and on the corporate market? Well, I think it's fair to say that uh, I was greeted with some suspicion and, uh, and a certain amount of innuendo and, some, and even some hostility. But at the end of the day, that didn't matter. Um, the group that I'm, I'm in, we've dedicated ourselves to try and um, take the teaching and the practice into corporate Australia to, to, to humanise corporate Australia, if you will. So the fact that some people um, might find it a little strange to talk about spirituality in a business meeting, um, I got over that quite quickly. And why do you do this? As a, as a spiritual leader, I'm very interested, and someone who does lead these groups and brings Thogya Rinpoche here, why do you continue to work at that pace when you know there's a deeper meaning? Well, you know, what I discovered in my career was that um, people spend most of their lives coming to work. And in order to make that meaningful, what you have to do is you have to provide them with a sense of purpose. You have to provide a vision as to where you want the organization to go. You want to agree the values that the organization will adopt. And you want to actually define what leadership is about. Those are much more profound and interesting and important questions than how we're going to make money. And I, my strong belief is that if you get those right, then the rest takes care of itself. And interestingly, when I was going through that transformation, um, I met uh, uh, Tony Grant, who's a professor of psychology at Sydney University. He started helping me shape my thinking from a psychological point of view. And at the same time, uh, when the pupil's ready, the teacher comes, and Sogil Rinpoche came into my life. And what was quite interesting was what Rinpoche was teaching Tony was actually teaching as well, but using different words. And then Rinpoche brought it all together by saying, well, while the Western world has spent the last thousand years looking at the external universe, the Tibetans and the Eastern philosophers have actually spent the last thousand years looking at the mind. And what's happening now is the two are being brought together. So, uh, you know, as, as I say, quite frequently. This is no hippy trippy kind of movement for me. This is actually about how you lead a better life. And it's also how you change the world because when people like yourself um, and Bill Gates and, and various other leaders step forward as philanthropists and spiritual, you know, we may be able to change the way corporate people and political leaders think about the world and we may save a rainforest or some animals just by you stepping forward as a role model and saying it's not namby-pamby, it's really important. But on that point, um, you know we are friends and you know that I've had big issues with you. Um, <laughs> one of the things Gordon did was step forward uh, as part of his business career to help Red Rooster go through uh, its financial difficulties. And I was very angry at that. And as an animal rights activist, I said to Gordon, and we'll say it again, um, how can a person who is evolved and a Buddhist sanction supporting a company or saving a company that is cruel to sentient beings? Well, Ruth actually asked me this question standing outside a red rooster. Um, and I, you know, I'll give, I'll give the people in the audience the same answer I gave her, which was, it was not an easy decision for me. So it was one I have to reflect on. Uh, my family were actually 
um, opposed to it. Um, but I, you know, the older I've got, the more I've realized that life is not black and white, that actually it's where in the ambiguity you actually are comfortable operating. And so this was an ambiguous area for me. Uh, but I was helped by the fact that His Holiness the Dalai Lama actually now eats meat. Um, so that kind of gave me a, a, a license to uh, consider it. And then I looked at the balance between uh, killing animals and the fact that we were employing um, about 10,000 people. And we, most of the people that we were employing were young kids of 16 to 18, where we were providing them with more than just the job, we are actually providing them with discipline. Um, and so I looked at the employment and the fact that these kids were then going on to university and so forth and came to terms with the fact, well, actually there's some good coming out of this as well. And then finally I came to the conclusion that, hey, I'm not perfect, and who of us is?